Hello. Welcome to Just the Dis. For this video, I have some suggestions for horror movies on Blu-ray for October. I might do a few of these. Um, just a small handful. Uh, I'm going to save... Actually, some of these might be harder to get. I apologize. But uh, I'll try and push most of that stuff to the back. Um, let me get started here. I'm going to kick it off with The First Power uh, with Lou Diamond Phillips. Who directed this? Nobody I remember. Um, I've always dug this one. I saw this as a kid uh, on VHS, and it always creeped me out. You know, I think I saw it before I saw Shocker, which it is a little bit similar to in that uh, Lou Diamond Phillips plays a, I think, homicide detective. Yeah, an L.A. homicide detective who is on the hunt for a uh, serial killer... Uh, the Pentagram Killer, played by Jeff Kober, who is really good and unsettling in this movie. And, you know, it's sort of the, that Seven type thing before Seven, but the twist is, well, it's not really a twist, the sort of thrust of the movie is that, you know, once he's killed, Jeff Kober uh, suddenly becomes more powerful than ever, and he can sort of, uh, what is the first power? The ability to inhabit the bodies of others. Because uh, he's a satanic disciple. And so then you have this whole idea of the killer can come from anywhere. It's kind of like the thing in a way, I guess. Uh, but it's it's genuinely unsettling. And the people that he inhabits suddenly gain satanic supernatural powers. Like the ability to jump off buildings and just do crazy stuff. Um, basically a kind of horror terminator kind of setup and I just thought it was a really interesting fit for Lou Diamond Phillips to play this role and um, this one really holds up this is a um, Scorpion releasing Blu-ray Region A I think it's still available in most places uh, but I find that this is a fun one to revisit during October uh, it just has the right energy for me it's a it's a good starting point so that's first. Next up, we have something from Toby Hooper. Spontaneous Combustion. This is actually one of my favorite Toby Hooper movies. And one that, um, I don't know, I feel like maybe there's a few people who haven't seen it and I think would enjoy it. Uh, basically, it's the story of uh, a guy whose parents become human guinea pigs for the project Samson, a top secret experiment exposing them to massive amounts of atomic bomb radiation. And when they die in a shocking accident, their infant son grows up to be a man whose rage can cause people to suddenly explode into flames. And that uh, son is played by Brad Dorif, who I like very much. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting premise. Just the idea that he can get upset and start people on fire. And uh, there's even a great scene with, I think, John Landis on a telephone where he starts him on fire over the phone, which is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, just a very volatile film, but definitely one that I dig and I think uh, is worth a look. This is a Code Red disc, uh, all region, and it might be harder to get now. Looks like it came out around 2014. But uh, it could be findable uh, on your normal retailers. I'm not sure about that. Uh, and there may be another version of it that I can link to in the uh, comment in the notes below. But um, definitely wor worth a look if you like Toby Hooper or if you just like you know offbeat horror films with Brad Dorif, who I think is just a really great actor. And to see him in this kind of a horror film, I don't know, works really well for me. Spontaneous combustion. This one is a discovery for me. I just saw this for the first time this year. It is called Insect, but may be known better under its video title of Blue Monkey, which is a better title in some ways, even though it's kind of just a throwaway line in the movie. Some kid says it, I think, at some point. But it's really about... It's kind of a monster movie, uh, and you have this mutant 
insect that basically bites a guy and then he becomes uh he becomes infected and it becomes sort of an outbreak movie this hospital's trying to contain what they think is some kind of deadly outbreak and then uh in the process he spits out like a larva or something and then they'd go and take that in another room and kind of leave uh not the best person in charge of that and then suddenly it turns into a giant bug a giant monster bug i can't think i think you can kind of see it on the back here a little bit but um it's got a fun cast uh you have steve rails back playing sort of a cop who has a buddy who's just gotten shot i think and he happens to be at the hospital when this starts to go down so he gets involved and then you have st uh, people like john vernon who runs uh the hospital he's got a smaller part joe flaherty is in it for a minute uh susan anspach and uh what's his name um oh man i can't remember this actor's name uh maybe it's don lake i want to say he's that guy right there he's in some of the uh christopher guest movies and i always think of him as more of a comedic performer but in this one he's sort of the scientist expert type that is helping out and he does a really good job i think uh and it's it's just a really good build you know like it starts as this outbreak thing and you don't really know where it's going in terms of what this creature can do and then once that takes over then it's like a giant monster on the loose in a hospital and i kind of like hospitals as a horror movie location for some reason because i don't know sometimes they feel like safe places but i feel like they often get used in horror as a not safe space and yeah having a giant bug on the loose is not safe i will say uh but this one is available i guess through dark force entertainment's uh website only unfortunately um so you have to pick it up there but i was really impressed with this one i only again saw it for the first time this year and i really enjoyed it it's a good creature feature insect aka blue monkey next i got one from uh, scream factory tales from the dark side the movie uh and this is of course an anthology horror film and it has a really solid cast as well including deborah harry christian slater david johansson william hickey uh and then my favorite sequence or uh, part of the story is with james remar and radon chong and a gargoyle and if you've seen that one you know what i'm talking about uh it's a really killer like if i had to pick out you know some of my favorite uh segments in anthologies obviously i'd go with maybe uh the what is it the box i can't remember if it's the the crate sorry the crate from creep show is one of my favorites and then i guess i can't remember if that's called the gargoyle or what but that's that segment with james remar in this movie would be another one i would throw into my uh pantheon just a really enjoyable sh you know movie version of a show and uh, i like it a lot um it has new interviews with director John Harrison, producer Mitchell Galen, and more, and an audio commentary with John Harrison and co-screenwriter George A. Romero. And I'd forgotten that uh, George A. Romero was a writer on this, and that's probably part of the reason it's good. Oh, and Steve Buscemi's in it, too. Very cool. Uh, but yeah, this is a new one from Screen Factory, relatively new, and definitely a good uh, thing to add to your horror anthology collection which i think is a uh, sort of a thing that people go for a lot during october and i always enjoy horror anthologies most in october personally and th i think this is one of the better ones personally uh and uh here is the um just real quick the old artwork which i i still kind of like uh and with their new slipcase as well uh so that is tales from the dark side this next one from Severin is kind of bonkers. Night Killer. Um, this is from Claudio Fergasso, who brought us the gems uh, Zombie 4 and Troll 2. Yes, he is the director of Troll 2, or the writer. I can't remember. He's definitely involved in Troll 2. And this movie is pretty insane. Um, it basically has... A killer that looks like that guy with the claws and the mask 
and we open on a scene of this ridiculous play being rehearsed and they have very 80s group of people doing this almost aerobic dance routine while upstairs in the dressing room the night killer's loose and he at least at least initially kills people by reaching his clawed hand through their chest and pulling their heart out so I don't know. He's kind of memorable in the way that he looks and the way that he behaves. And Claudio Fragasso movies to me are fascinating because I don't know. I feel like they tend to contain elements of human interaction that doesn't feel human. And that I mean, there's just some weird stuff in these movies. Like this one has this subplot where this woman is kidnapped and kind of tortured a little bit and, it turns out to be uh, something that she kind of goes with, and that's I don't know how I feel about that part of it, but that si- side plot is just totally unexpected and strange, and every time the Night Killer shows up, he just is kind of nuts. Um, but I don't know. I just felt like this one was just the kind of crazy that I was looking for for this year, for horror movies this year, and I had somehow missed it, uh, and... Like, that kind of unhinged, like, did a person who's seen American horror movies write this? Because it just feels different, in a way, than a lot of traditional American horror films, while still seeming to grab onto some of the tropes. Um, I don't know. Definitely kind of a gem in its own way. This is a Severin disc. It is all region. Has a couple special features there. Worth a pickup, I think. Um, Night Killer. Okay, the next two are a little harder to get, so I'm just going to preface with that, but you may still be able to find them on eBay, possibly, or maybe Amazon Marketplace, I don't know. This is another discovery for me this year. It is The Power, not the first power, just The Power, and this one is, I want to say from like 84, yeah, and it is from directors uh, Jeff Obrow and... Stephen Carpenter, and uh, they did stuff like The Dorm, The Drip, Blood, which I also like, and The Kindred, which I kind of love, and I recommend both of those as well. Uh, Dorm, The Drip, Blood is on Blu-ray from Synapse, and I think Synapse is actually working on a Blu-ray for The Kindred right now, and that will be amazing when it comes out, because that movie is also pretty crazy and has a great monster thing happening, and Rod Steiger, and anyway... These guys make really interesting horror films. I think if you watch uh, Dorm the Drip Blood, The Power, and The Kindred close together, you, you really get to see some interesting stuff. And I think part of it, at least for me, became more evident in this movie where um, the characters seem just grounded enough in a way that I guess it could still play campy, but it plays believable somehow. And they have you know, some actors that I don't recognize, maybe less experienced actors that are pulling it off, if you will. And I don't know, there's something about the grounded characters that keeps me on board. Um, but this one, uh, is about a, an Aztec idol that is stolen from a professor and ends up in the hands of three high school students who try to use it to get in touch with the spirit world. Basically they have sort of a seance and they end up using it almost by accident or I can't, I can't remember if it's totally accidental but um, their seance is definitely supercharged by this idol which is this crazy little wooden guy I'm trying to think if he even shows up in the front I don't think he does um, that's what that looks like um, this is also all region it's a code red disc I think I initially got this from Ronin Flix, but I just checked and I think it's sold out there uh, but it maybe it'll sh- show up again at some point. But yeah, this idol um, starts to affect people, uh, both in terms of nightmares and psychic energy, like stuff being thrown around apartments. And in the case of one guy, it starts to like transform him physically, as you can see there. Um, and he gets kind of crazy. And I don't know, it's just, it's got a slower build to it, but it kind of worked for me in a way that I didn't expect. I, I kind of had thought it was supposed to be 
outlandish and bonkers, and it is that, but it also just worked uh, on another level. So I was kind of surprised and impressed with this, and it gave me a better respect for the uh, Jeffrey Obrow, Stephen Carpenter duo and what they do as horror filmmakers. So this was a treat for me to discover this one this year, The Power. And this one is also out of print, Scorpion Mortuary, where nobody rests in peace. Uh, oh yeah, Bill Paxton's in this, uh, along with Christopher Dor George and Linda J. George. Um, let's see here. Uh, what's how does, I'm trying to remember. There's uh, this woman, uh, Mary McDonough, from the Waltons, I guess, uh, has been having these nightmares uh, ever since her father drowned in a family swimming pool. And that's the weirdest opening scene. You get to see her father drown and it's, let's say it's not exactly an accident. And it's a very strange uh, incident, if you will. And uh, she uh, she knows his death wasn't an accident and she's right. And she's having trouble convince people of that. And uh, her boyfriend... Uh, David Wallace, who I guess was in Humongous, which is another one I bought but I haven't watched yet, and I've heard that's an interesting one as well. Um, she sees like a hooded figure that uh, is part of her nightmares, and she ends up going to the town's mortuary, and there's like a weird ritual happening there, and things get a little crazy after that, and people in hoods and Satan and Anyway, it's another one that I would kind of recommend going in. Maybe watch the trailer, but knowing as little as possible going in kind of helped me appreciate the weirdness of this movie. Uh, but it ended up being kind of a lot of fun for me. And one that I I think I only found this one personally last year. I'd heard of it. It definitely has a title that, you know, rings familiar. Like I probably saw the VHS cover as a kid but I never saw the movie and uh, I finally got to check it out on this Blu-ray, which I'd had for years. I finally got around to it last year and I was like, wow, that was kind of fun. And uh, I actually put it into my list for pure cinema when we did a horror all nighter episode last year. And I do think this would be fun with the crowd uh, if, and when that's possible, but just as fun horror viewing for October mortuary is a good time. And Bill Paxton, Really fun in this movie in a smaller part. And this last one I have definitely not watched yet, but uh, I just got it. It's from Kino, and it's a black and white, and it just looks intriguing to me. It's got a good cast. You've got uh, Peter Cushing and Donald Pleasance and Billy Whitelaw, and uh, I'll just read the back of this one because, I again, I don't know too much about it. Uh, it says, uh, Brand new 2K Master, more fearsome than Frankenstein, more demonic than Dracula, Edinburgh, 1827, Irish immigrants, Burke and Hare. Uh, let's see, George Rose plays Burke and Donald Pleasance plays Hare. So we know the Burke and Hare story vaguely, what their deal is. And this is another take on that. Uh, hit upon the idea of selling the bodies of the recently deceased to eminent surgeon Dr. Robert Knox. That's Peter Cushing. And uh, Knox, knowing that experimental vivisections is the only way for medicine to make progress, forms an uneasy alliance with the self-styled body snatchers. When Burke and Hare's supply of available corpses begins to run out, they decide to speed the process along by murdering the poor and the homeless. Uh, men and women, old and young, everyone becomes a target for the deadly duo. But even as the body count rises, Knox turns a blind eye to the methods uh, in order to further his research. But after his own medical uh, student, one of his own medical students is murdered, Knox finds it difficult to remain impassive. Um, and then I'm, obviously he's got to get into it with these guys. This is the same kind of story that the body snatcher with Boris Karloff is based on. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, very similar in that way. I, I'll definitely bring up the body snatcher at some point. I might do just a black and white horror, uh, video. If anybody has any interest in, in that, let me know below. I've sort of started thinking about something along those lines, but I like this cast, and that story is the sort of macabre, october -y kind of feeling that I'm looking for. Uh, this one also includes an audio commentary from film historian Tim Lucas, who is kind of like the Cadillac of horror commentaries, a guy who knows everything there is to know about Mario Bava and uh, 
always gives a great commentary, you know, wall to wall, filled with information about production, actors, uh, screenwriters, everybody. So I look forward to checking that out. Um, anyway, this is a new one from Kino, and I just thought it might be a fun little one to toss in, even though I haven't watched it yet. So that is my first group of horror Blu-ray recommendations for October. I will try to put together another stack of these before the end of the month just to offer some ideas if you're looking for ideas of stuff to watch. Um, but thank you for uh, checking out this video, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.